In this video, I'm going to teach you the basics of hard surface modeling in Blender, and I'm currently using Blender version 2.81. So what is hard surface modeling? Hard surface modeling is when you are creating or modeling a mesh that if it were in the real world, it would be a hard object. Mostly things like metal, wood, and other things like that. Hard surface modeling is used to create vehicles, sci-fi objects, interior spaces, and many more things. So it's a crucial technique to learn early on in your 3D education. In my previous video about sci-fi interiors and making modular pieces, I didn't really have proper time to show you all the techniques that I'd use to make the interiors. So here I am, as promised, making a video just for hard surface modeling. So a little disclaimer, when you're doing hard surface modeling, you are going to be using quite a bit of shortcuts. It's just faster than going over to the toolbar constantly, going through menus and things like that. So I'll do my best to explain which keys I'm pressing and why. If I miss any, just ask in the comments. All right, let's start with the very basics. You very likely already have a cube in your screen and that's okay, let's keep it there. I'm gonna add mine back by pressing Shift A and cube. All right, so if we press the tab button on the keyboard, we go into editing mode. If you look on the top left, currently it's in object mode. If I press tab, it goes into editing mode and if I press tab again, it goes back to object mode. So when we're in edit mode, we see different colors and we see some dots and lines that we didn't see before. So right next to where it says edit mode, we've got three buttons here, vertex select, edge select, and face select. So let's go to face select and right click on any one of these faces of the cube. A face is a flat polygon in three dimensional space. Meshes are made up of polygons or faces, as Blender calls them. Next, we've got edges. Edges are the lines in between or that make up the polygon or faces. Lastly, we have vertexes or vertices, which are the dots that make up the edges. In hard surface modeling, we'll pretty much always be in face select mode because hard surfacing deals with the faces of a mesh. Just like in the real world, if you're going to be building or sculpting or creating something, you're going to be using different tools. So in the 3D world of modeling, it's no different. There's a whole bunch of tools over here on the left, and there's also even more tools you can get through add-ons and other deeper menus that you'll be using to master hard surface modeling. But in this video, I really just want to cover the basic tools over here on the left. So the very first one, and which is the most popular, is the extrude, which is the letter E. So you have to have a face selected first, and if you press E, now I see this blue line. That is the axis that it's going to be extruding upon. If I click, I'm done extruding. Now I can move my mouse again. So again, right click on a face, press the letter E, and now we're extruding along that axis, which is actually the normal of that face. That face faces up, or Z, and so that's what it's going to extrude to. If I click on this face, this green line of the grid is on the Y axis. So if I press E, it's extruding along the normal, which is along the axis. So if you go to the actual extrude tool over here and you hold down your left click button, you'll see there's four different versions of the extruding tool. They all apply to a few different situations, but mostly you'll see the difference when we have multiple faces selected. So let's use the first one and I'm going to hold shift and right click on a second face. So now I call it multi-selecting. Now with the first one selected, extrude region, let's see what happens. This little overlay is showing kind of an in-between angle of these two faces. If I click on it, it's extruding in that direction. However, if I choose the second one, extrude along normals, that goes away. If I left click and drag my mouse, it's extruding out along the normals and it's kind of giving a weird shape. If we go to the side view, it's not, it's not parallel anymore. Okay, let's undo again. Let's use the third one, extrude individuals. Click and drag, this is a left click drag. Now it's extruding only individual faces, they're not connected, there's no median angle or anything like that. Let's go back one more and see what this last one does. Extrude to cursor. This is a cool one. I've never actually used this, but it's pretty fun. If you simply left click, it extrudes those faces to where your cursor is in three dimensional space. I'm gonna go back and just do it to one face. Look at that. It extrudes to wherever my cursor is in 3D space. Pretty neat. All right, I'm gonna show you something really cool to do with the icosahedron that you can use the extrude tool to make a cool shape. Let's press tab to get back to object mode, and then we can hit the delete button to delete that cube mesh. Shift A and go to icosphere, tab to edit, go to your extrude individuals, 
click and drag. This is extruding all of the triangles outwards along their normal, which is pointing away from the center. Now, if you use materials and some additional hard surfacing tools that we're going to talk about next, you can make some really cool abstract or alien looking things. All right, next tool is inset. So let's press tab to go to edit mode. I'm going to select one face over here and I'm going to press the letter I for inset. Now I have this little line and I've, as I move my mouse, we're controlling how much or how deep an inset to make. If I choose that's good, I'm going to left click to finalize that and now it's done. So what can I do with this? A lot of things. I'm going to press the decimal button on my keypad and it's going to zoom me in to whatever is selected. That's a nice way to get up, up close when you're editing. And you can use minus or plus to zoom out or in. So with this face selected, now I can press E and extrude. And now I have this miniature face sticking out. I can do it again. I, E, I, E. to make kind of a stair-stepped shape. But now what if we have multiple faces selected? I hold shift and I right clicked on another face. Press the letter I. They're insetting together, which is cool for some uses, but what if I want to inset them individually? Just press I again. And now we have individual insetting. If I right click, it's going to basically cancel this operation and go back to how it was before. Here's a nice way to make some easy 3D panels. Press I for inset, drag it in a little bit and left click. Now, select these shapes around, select those outer edges with right clicking, press I twice to do individual insetting, and add a little bit of a border on the edge, and left click, and then E to extrude those. Click on your center face and E to extrude that one. Then you've got this cool, kind of cushiony looking three dimensional face. All right, next is bevel. With a face selected, if I click on this bevel tool, I need to left click and drag outwards. This will control how deep the bevel is. Now, if you bring up your tools menu over here, which is a little screwdriver and wrench, we can choose width type, how many segments are gonna be on the bevel and the profile shape of it. So let's put eight. Now, look how it's different than before. If I click and drag one the left click, now we've got eight individual pieces on the bevel and it's round, much smoother. If we add a whole bunch of more segments, it's gonna be even smoother. When I'm modeling, I honestly never click on any of these tools anymore. I use the keyboard shortcut. So the keyboard shortcut for bevel is control B. Now while you're beveling, if you use plus or minus, you can increase or decrease the number of faces on the bevel. Hit enter or left click to confirm. Now if you press tab again to get out of object mode, we've got this cube with a rounded cushiony face. Next tool is loop cut. This is control R. You must be in edit mode. If you press control R, it'll draw a line or a square around any axis of the cube. This way, that way, or that way. If I left click, I'm not done yet. Now I have to tell where do I want the loop cut to be. It's basically drawing edges parallel around the whole cube. So if I like this, I can left click and now I'm done. Now we have new faces to play with. Also, notice it puts you into edge mode. Let's go back to face select mode. Now I have new faces that I can edit. And I've just basically cut around the edge, added edges to make new faces. Let's do that again. If we do control R, and this time if we use plus and minus, just like we're using the bevel tool, it's adding or subtracting segments for the loop cut. If I want to divide that piece into three pieces, I add two loop cuts, hit enter, and now I can drag them around. If I right click, it's going to go back to the center. There we go, which is nice. I usually want loop cuts centered and equally spaced. All right, the next tool is the spin tool. This is a really great tool to use when making pipes or making bent pieces of a mesh. I'm going to get out of edit mode into object mode. I'm going to delete my cube and I'm going to make a cylinder. Shift A, cylinder. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the number one. So when we're using the spin tool, we have to set the 3D cursor in the right place so that we can spin the mesh or the face around a 3D cursor. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna click right on the corner edge of this cylinder. I'm gonna zoom out. Now let's go to edit mode, tab, click on the spin tool. Now I suggest having your tools dialog open over here so that you can select which axis to use. We've got X, Y, Z. So if we use Z, it's going to spin 
the face that we have selected, which I'm going to select this top face. I used Alt and left click to drag around like this. So I'm going to go up here, right click on the top face, press 1 again, go to that perfect side view, and let's change our axis to Y. That's the one we want. X is not the direction we want. Let's use Y, and let's just click on this plus and drag it. Look at that. Isn't that cool? We made a perfect round bent piece of this, say, pipe or <laughs> candy cane, whatever you're making. Looks like an exhaust vent on a boat. Let's undo. I'll show you another trick. If we click again to make another spin while holding the control key, we can do exact rotations, say of 90 degrees or 45 degrees, things like that. Very helpful. Got this cool overlay um, that really helps a lot. So that is the spin tool. You can use it on any mesh, of course, or any shape. Let's say I want to bend this face. Instead of pressing 1, I'm going to press 3. So now we're on the other side. Let's use X. And I need to draw my cursor right here. If I don't, watch, if I have it out here, it's going to spin around the 3D cursor. I usually don't want that. I want it right around the corner. So there and hold control. I can draw an exact spin based on and rotating around that 3D cursor. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you had any questions about anything or if I skipped over something in the video, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.